This is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this power-up tutorial on setting up and editing multi-clips. I've created a Final Cut project, and I've loaded four shots in here. Now, this is from a, a program called Moscow on Ice that was shot by Green HD Productions. They used four cameras, and camera one is our high center wide shot. Camera two is our close-up camera. Camera 3 is on a jib arm off to one side, and camera 4 is on a tripod off to one side, sort of as protection, just in case everything else ends. So we've got these four clips. Before we even start building our multi-clip, there's a couple things that I want to do first. First, I want to go through each shot and determine what my sync point is. Now, my sync point can be a common time code or a common out. In this case, I've set a common in. So I went through each one of these clips, and I've set an in where they all sync up at the same point. It's just before the music starts on the next clip. Second thing that I need to do is I need to change the RT setting that stands for real time on my timeline. So I go to the RT menu, and I change it from safe RT to unlimited RT. This allows the computer to decrease the playback quality during the edit so that I get higher throughput through my hard disk and my CPU. Now, that does not affect the output. The output is always at the highest quality. It only affects the playback during editing. The other thing that I want to make sure and do is set the video quality to dynamic and the frame rate to dynamic. What dynamic and dynamic does is it gives the computer permission to decrease video quality or to decrease frame rate if it hits a particularly hard section of playback. In other words, I give it permission to, to vary depending upon the load that's on the computer. This is important because a multi-clip is hugely taxing on your system, and you want to give it permission to decrease the quality while you're editing the multi-clip. Remember, the output is always at the highest quality. Once we've got the RT settings set to unlimited, dynamic, and dynamic, and we've got a common sync point, which we've got here, now we can build our multi-clip. So that I can prove a point, I'm going to just select two shots. You would normally select all the shots that you want to build into your multi-clip, but I want to select two just to make a point. I'll select the two that I want to build into a multi-clip, go to Modify, go down to Make Multi-Clip. When we do, the Make Multi-Clip dialog box opens and says, do you want to synchronize this on Common In, which I need to set, a Common Out, which I need to set, or Common Time Code or Auxiliary Time Code, which is set when you record the video by feeding Common Time Code to all the cameras. Unless you're working with professional-grade gear and jam syncing time code to all of your cameras, most of the time you'll be synchronizing on a Common In or a Common Out. Remember, you need to set this before you start building your multi-clip. Because I've already set the in, I'm going to synchronize based on a common in. If I have a camera that I realized I shouldn't have used, just uncheck it here and it'll be ignored when you build the multi-clip. Most of the time, you'll select the right number of shots so you can leave these all checked. Once you've determined what your sync point is, click OK and it creates a new icon here, which has a very weird name, but the key phrase is multi-clip. When I double-click the multi-clip and load it in, there's my camera one shot, and there's my camera two shot. And this is why I only selected two. What happens if, just through a quirk of fate, you uh, failed to select a shot? Well, simply grab the shot that you want to add, drag it in, and hold it until a menu pops up. Insert New Angle is going to add the shot into your multi-clip. Insert New Angle Affiliates will insert the angle into the multi-clip and all multi-clips that are related to it. Talk more about that in a second. Let's just insert a new angle. Now, if I grab this other shot that I should have added, if I drag it on top of an existing angle, I have another choice that shows up. I can insert a new angle, or I can insert a new angle affiliate, or I can overwrite the angle. In this case, it would replace the shot that's there with the new shot. Except now I need the shot that's there, so let's just drag this down here and I'll just insert a new angle. Now I've got all four of my shots, but they're not in the right order. If I hold the Command key down, I can Command drag the shots in any order that I want, changing and rebuilding until I'm finally happy with how they're all laid out. Another cool thing is if you hold the Command key down and drag a shot out and let go of the shot, poof, it disappears. The Command Drag allows me to remove a shot. I can't remove the shot that has a box around it, but I can remove any other shot. Additionally, let's say that I had these two shots and I realized after the fact that they're not in sync, and I need to sync up these shots. I screwed up setting the endpoint, for instance. If you hold down the Shift and the Control key, Shift and Control 
allows you to drag the clip until you get it set exactly where you want the sync point to be. When you let go, that's your new sync point. Just to quickly reset everything, this time I'm going to do it right. I'm going to select all four of my clips, go to Modify, Make, Multi-Clip, accept all the defaults, click OK, and drag this over. So you can see actually the process of creating a multi-clip can be done in seconds. The next step is to figure out what to do with the multi-clip. In this particular case, this is a song that runs about two minutes, and I'm going to edit the entire song. But if I were doing, say, a high school play where I'm covering it with three shots, or a soap opera for broadcast television, I'm going to record the entire piece, and I'm going to have, say, multiple shots coming off that, that multi-clip. Well, the easiest way to do that is to simply put your playhead where you want the shot to start and set it in, put the playhead where you want the shot to end and set it out. So I build one multi-clip, which is my entire performance, and edit it multiple times like you would edit multiple shots out of a single long clip. We can do the exact same thing, except now there's four shots that come with it. In my particular case, I want to find the beginning of the music, so I'm going to find the spot using the arrow keys exactly where his hands start to come together, right there. That's going to be the in of my multi-clip, and we'll go to the out of my multi-clip and find the spot just before, let's see, right about there, just before his arms drop, and now we'll edit that to the timeline by clicking the red envelope. Shift-Z to get everything to fit, and there's our multi-clip. Now we need to synchronize the shot that's in the viewer with the shot on the timeline. Because each of these is full screen, I can only see one full screen shot at a time. So the canvas shows me the shot that I'm working on. To synchronize between the viewer and the timeline, we go up to this middle pop-up menu and we switch it from sync off to open. What open means is that I am opening into the viewer the shot that's in the timeline. Once I've got it opened, I need to tell it where the audio is going to come from, so I'll go back to this menu, go down to the audio menu. If I want to take some audio from one shot and other audio from another shot, I could specify by individual takes, but most of the time, with the multi-clips that I work with, all of my audio is coming from a mixing console. I'm not doing the audio mix inside Final Cut, I'm doing the video mix inside Final Cut. So I'm going to select all my audio clips. In this case, I want the audio to come from this shot right here. So I click on the shot. It instantly confirms that there's audio there by taking me to the audio tab in the viewer. I click on the video. The next step is to determine where the video comes from. And again, I go back to this middle pop-up menu. I go down to video and I say, where's the video come from? I want my starting shot to be, say, here. The green box indicates where my audio comes from. The blue box indicates where my video comes from. Notice that the audio is green, which is why this box is green. The video is blue, which is why that box is blue. Notice also that I set the audio first, and the reason is whichever of these I set last is the one I'm going to switch in the multi-clip. Most of the time, my audio comes from a mixing console. I'm going to leave that alone, so I'm going to set the audio first so the only thing that I switch is the video. Notice how the main picture in the canvas changes as I click on different shots. Well, this blue box indicates where my video is coming from. And because I set the audio first, I don't switch the audio with the video. The audio remains locked on that first shot. So. I went to this middle pop-up menu, set it to sync open, then I set my audio, then I set my video. There's only two steps left and we're ready to go. Those steps are to click once on the timeline to select it, and then finally to hit the home key and put my playhead at the beginning. The timeline must be selected when you start your multi-clip, because when the timeline is selected everything runs in sync. When the viewer is selected, I've seen all kinds of strange things happen. So now I've got the timeline selected, I hit the space bar, and we're rolling. All the shots are being viewed in the viewer. My opening shot is coming from down here. Now there's three ways that we can switch our multi-clip. We can switch it by clicking in the viewer by the, on the picture we want, which is my personal favorite. We can switch by going to the keypad, and to do that we go to the Tools menu, Keyboard Layout, and set it to Multi-Camera Editing. When you want to change to Shot 1, 2, 3, 4, you press the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 on the keypad. Now there's a secret tip here. If you just press the number, all it's going to do is switch the main shot. And a switch to Apple means that we're changing the picture, but we're not putting an edit point in. If you hold the Command key down and Command 
one command to command three, then it'll put a cut in. A cut is an edit point where the shot changes at the edit point. The other option is to use button bars, and we go to the, the button bar, multi-clip, right down here. You click this button, it switches the main angle from camera one to camera two to camera three, but it doesn't put an edit point in. Or you can switch your audio tracks between track one, two, three, and four. This is just a switch. Again, it doesn't force an edit point, it just changes the shot. This is a cut. It forces an edit point and it changes the shot. The advantage to doing it in the viewer is it's real time. I can just play through and cut my shot. The advantage to doing it with buttons is you don't have to do it in real time. You can really study where you want to put your shot in. Let me just cut two shots because there's one more thing I want to show you here. We hit the home key. We're going to start with this shot up here and make sure the timeline is selected. Hit the space bar. Okay, close enough. We've just cut the first little bit of this, but what I wanted to illustrate is right down here. I'm going to zoom in, Command Plus. This is now just a shot, which is in our timeline. If we turn off snapping and click on the Roll tool, we can roll this back and forth to find the exact spot we want to do our edit. If we wanted to change a shot, just put your clip in the middle of the shot and click on the shot that you want to change. Not hard at all. So that now you can go through, cut this in real time or slow motion, whichever works the best for you. Cut it using buttons or cut it using the keypad or cut it using the mouse inside the viewer. And when you're done, there's only just a couple more things you need to do. Once you're done editing, and let's assume this is perfect. <laughs> and I've only got four shots done, so clearly this is a large assumption. You go up to modify and you make sure to select collapse multi-clip. What that does is it disconnects all the shots that you're not using, so you're not going to hammer your hard disk by playing this massive multi-clip with all kinds of video streaming across from the hard disk that you're not using. You only collapse your multi-clip when you're done with it. But what happens if you collapse your multi-clip and then suddenly you change your mind and you've got to go back and re-edit? You go to the Modify menu and you uncollapse multi-clip. Uncollapsing multi-clip simply pulls everything back together again and now you've got all your shots back. Then you can go back and re-edit the multi-clip. Remember to always collapse when you're done editing or your poor hard disk is definitely not going to like you. Two last notes. A multi-clip allows you to synchronize 128 shots at once and to view up to 16 of them at the same time in the viewer. You control how many you're going to view from this pop-up menu right here. Second, Say you want to do some filters or effects work. Where's the best place to do that? Well, there's two schools of thought. One is you could go and, just as you do now, select a clip and add a filter. But because a multi-clip can have hundreds of shots from the same sources, many times it's easier before you even build the multi-clip to select a clip, load it up into the viewer, and with it in the viewer, go to the, to the effects menu and apply a filter that you want to use. And one of the common ones that we play with is the color corrector three-way filter. This allows you to color correct a clip before you even build it into the multi-clip. The advantage to this is you're only having to color correct once and it affects all the clips downstream, that is to say Second. all the clips in your edit. Keep in mind that when you're playing the multi-clip, Final Cut ignores all filters, doesn't display it. It's going to look like you had never filtered it in the first place. But the filter will pass through, and once you're done editing the multi-clip, all those filter settings have been applied. A very fast way of doing color correction before you even go to the effort of editing your multi-clip. I have always enjoyed playing with multi-clips. And once I've learned how to set them up by following this cookbook approach, I've never had a problem with them. My name is Larry Jordan, and thanks for watching this Power Up Tutorial. <laughs>